Until the moon of light rose, he would advance carefully through the trees. It might be dangerous, but it was better than doing nothing. Monsters? Did they appear here? He hadn't heard anything about them in Kauru. That reminded him. What was the torch-like flame he saw before entering the forest? Was there someone else here? But Conway didn't understand why anyone would enter the forest. Especially in the dead of night. Well, I mean, you did. So, maybe they were running away from something too, huh? Thinking, Conway stared at the dark grove ahead of him. That flame that blazed and floated. It floated in that way. Just like that. Ah! The flame. It definitely was an illusion. It was flickering in front of him. How do, how do you know it's not an illusion, Conway? <laughs> Just out of curiosity. Because <laughs> if this is magical forest of illusions, are you really going to be able to tell the difference? His nerves shook. Conway crouched down and lowered his ears as he watched cautiously. It seemed like a torch. He faintly saw a hand grasping a piece of firewood. A cat? Or a monster? And if it was a cat, who was it? The torch's flame swayed gently. Conway stared at it without blinking. If possible, he wanted it to go away. However, the situation rose against his wishes. He thought it was... getting closer? There was some distance between Conway and the flame. Had he been noticed anyway? All of his hair stood on end. Whether it was a cat or a monster, he did not know. Still, what should he do? Reaching his hand to the sword at his waist, Conway stopped moving. He felt he knew the figure who walked through the grove. He didn't know for sure, but the figure seemed to be wearing long clothes. Oh, is it the poet from earlier? And the shadow of a certain cat passed through Conway's mind. Ah! The figure before him and the figure in his memories now came together. At the distance closed, Conway was sure. Yeah, it is the poet. His hair stood on end for a different reason this time. He unintentionally shook his tail left and right. Oh, that's adorable, Conway. And the poet slowly drew near, holding his torch. Conway abandoned his caution and stood. If he stopped to think about it, it should have been odd to see someone in the forest this late. But for some reason, he didn't think about that way with the poet. There was a mysterious and calm air about the poet. His silent movements brought relief to Conway. Conway was interested in him ever since their meeting before. He didn't know anything about him, yet he felt attracted to his existence. He didn't know why. But the atmosphere of the poet was awfully sad. He was able to meet him again. Only that thought satisfied Conway now. When Conway approached him, the poet stopped and put his musical instrument on the ground. The forest rustled. All fell silent in the forest around the poet. Who exactly are you? There was no answer. The poet only smiled, but Conway kept asking questions, as if the floodgates had been opened. Why are you in the forest? How did you know I was here? Was it a coincidence? You... Who are you? There was no answer. Conway couldn't see the eyes behind the hood very well because of the shadows. But he felt the poet was staring at him. The poet turned to look back to the forest behind him and made an unhurried gesture. What? The poet nodded slightly. Is there something up ahead? The poet turned his back on Conaway and gazed at the sky. His long clothes fluttered subtly, feeling like he was looking at a dream. Conaway squinted. A cat who didn't speak and only sang but he behaved like his songs were all he needed. 
It really was mysterious. The poet looked over his shoulder again. Their eyes met briefly. Conway didn't understand, but he certainly felt it. Before he could ask, the poet turned his face away and began to walk. Was Conway supposed to follow him? Was it all right if he followed? Conway was confused, and the poet kept walking on. Why should he hesitate? He was alone, after all. Maybe the poet wasn't an enemy Conway had to avoid. He decided to follow him. Conway stared at the poet's back in front of him and began to walk through the thick, dense forest. I will not be shocked if the poet turns out to be less than of good intent. Shadows of demons were creeping closer. As Conway looked at the shaking branches and leaves of the trees, he thought of such things. The forest was really dark. The smell of grass was unpleasant. The humidity clung to his fur uncomfortably. Conway followed closely after the poet so as not to lose sight of him and his torch. Where exactly were they going? The poet walked so smoothly he seemed like he was floating. A strange cry sounded somewhere. The whole forest hushed and watched Conway. Meanwhile, the poet was his only guide. Darkness filled his view, and then suddenly the brush opened up before him. Ahead was a small clearing. There was a large stone in the middle, a boulder. When the poet reached the side of the boulder, he looked to Conway as if to beckon him over. Conway approached at a quick pace. There were several large stones in the circle, and the tall grasses grew thickly. Between the stones, there was a gap that was big enough for Conway to crawl into. Conway cast his eyes to the poet. He received a small nod in return. Uh... What? Conway lowered his posture and crawled into the gap between the stones. Inside was a little damp and he felt a chill when he sat down. He drew in his tail and tucked it between his feet. It was small and dark, but... Strangely, Conway liked it. He leaned against the stone, sighed, and cast his eyes towards the poet. Uh. Conway stretched his body and looked around. He was gone. He was just there, and then he disappeared like a mirage. Uh. In utter amazement, Conway slowly returned to the gap between the stones. Was Conway being deceived, or was this all an illusion? At the thought, he immediately crawled out of the gap. Was it a trap? Conway hid in the bushes and watched. He heard nothing besides the rustling of the trees. Returning to the gap between the stones once again, Conway tried to think. Even though he felt suspicious, Conway still thought the poet wasn't an enemy. Perhaps he knew Conway was lost and came with the intention to guide him. Conway had such a feeling. When he closed his eyes, the image of Kaoru he saw before leaving revived once again. His appearance had been recognized by a cat of his village. He couldn't forget the fear in his eyes when he saw such a horrible thing. Pain ran through his throat and chest. He couldn't go back anymore. Bendito Catboy. As Conway kept still, sleep crept up on him. He couldn't sleep here, but his body felt weary. Even while he thought he mustn't sleep, he felt his eyelids grow heavy. Conway gradually fell asleep. Oh God. What's gonna happen? Nothing apparently, okay. Enveloped in the morning air, Conway woke up. His view was clouded with a white haze. As his consciousness cleared, he realized it was fog. Uh, oh! Okay. Forest of Illusion. Lost in the forest. 
So, that's right, we had a map early on in the game that showed us, hey, you're in Kauru. Then later it pointed out on a similar map, like, hey, that's, that's, you know, Sissa. Or whatever the city is. I think it's Sissa, yeah. So I guess, like, this is signifying we're, like, in a new chapter. We've moved locations. Okay. He got up from the stone he was leaning on. Because of the uncomfortable posture, his body creaked in protest. He crawled out from the gap in the stones and stretched. Conway turned his eyes to his tail and was still shocked to see it had turned black. This was the first time he'd seen it in the light. He checked the marks on his arms and legs. They were black, and they seemed even more detestable than they did at night. Conway rubbed them lightly, but they didn't go away. His ears must still be black too. He realized how hopeless the reality was and began to feel depressed. But feeling that way wouldn't help him. He rolled up the sleeves of his shirt and began to groom. Conway looked around the morning forest. The atmosphere was a little different now that the bright sky had replaced the dark of night. When he was done grooming, Conway shouldered his burlap bag and stood up. By chance, he remembered the poet. He didn't know whether that was a dream or reality. Mulling over the mysterious events of the night before, Conway walked through the forest. Even though it was morning in the forest, he couldn't let his guard down. He had to watch out for the void above all else. Conway scratched at the trunks of trees as he walked. While he confirmed the position of the Moon of Light, Conway carefully traversed the forest. You know, I just had a thought that m marking the tree was something that the cats did to like mark their territory and leave their scent. So if someone was following Conway, perhaps from the village, perhaps marking the trees is going to help them find him. Hmm. Even though it was brighter than it was at night, the odd atmosphere didn't change. Conway stopped and sniffed the air. He smelled the scent of water, different from the humidity. Perhaps there was a spring nearby. He pushed aside some bushes and found a small pool of water. Several leaves floated in it, but it was otherwise clear. It looked like a spring. Suddenly feeling thirsty, Conway stooped down towards the water. The water was cold enough to sting, but it felt comfortable. Conway closed his eyes tightly. He lifted his face up. Water sprayed in the light. After shaking his head several times, he lapped the water with his tongue. The coldness of his face was sweet. When he was done, Conway wiped his face with the hem of his coat. He tossed out the water in his flasks and refilled them with fresh water. After having a drink, Conway felt rejuvenated. When he stood, Conway caught something glittering from the corner of his eye. He squinted. Something like a bracelet lay at the root of a tree. It was well polished and reflected light. Had someone dropped it? In a place like this? The shiny bracelet seemed awfully pretty, and Conway reached out for it. It was an act of simple curiosity, but as soon as his fingertips touched the bracelet, Conway felt a shock. He withdrew his hand in panic and his heart raced like it would burst. A hot pulse beat through his ears. It felt like he had been struck from within. Uh. Conway gritted his teeth and knelt down. His vision shook. Whether it was the ground, the air, or himself shaking, he couldn't tell. Conway didn't understand what was happening. The intense pulsing did not stop, and he began to pant. Sweat rolled down his temple. It felt familiar. It felt just like when he empathized with someone. I can't, uh. Conway rubbed his forehead against the ground. 
A green color appeared and shook along with his vision. Oh, what's this? Something rustled. Was it moving? Gradually, he realized this green color was of a forest. A vision was playing in his mind's eye without his permission. It was an odd feeling, like he was borrowing the sight of someone else. This wasn't his memory. Then, whose was it? It was definitely in this forest. He didn't recognize the sound. Even if he did, the ringing in his ear made it difficult too. Occasionally, the view tipped downwards where Conway could see the ground. He seemed to be advancing. But where was he going? I wonder if this bracelet belonged to someone who was in the Forest of Illusions. Maybe they wandered into it and died. So maybe this is like their last memory or something because apparently Conway's power like not only lets them pick up on people's emotions, but on their memories. Meanwhile, Conway's pain continued. Unable to endure it, he screamed out. The image is blurred as if in tandem with his spirit. Uh, uh. Then the verdant memory ended. Conway opened his eyes, stunned for a little while. He breathed harshly. The pain that tormented his body had inexplicably disappeared. Just now, was it a dream? No, it was different. It wasn't a dream. Conway was surely conscious. It was the forest. It was an image of the forest. Conway slowly raised his body and looked at the bracelet resting at the roots of the tree. It looked like an ordinary bracelet at first glance, but when he touched it, it shocked him. Uh... Who? Uh, but, 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 did you see it? That memory? Suddenly, he heard a voice from overhead. Conway jumped, but then laid down low. He looked over the surrounding grove, but there was nothing standing out in the deep green. Where are you looking? You're completely off. A slightly high-toned voice echoed with laughter from all directions. He didn't know where it came from. Feeling like even his breathing was noisy, Conway held his breath. Here I am. He heard an impatient voice behind him. When Conway turned around, a shadow jumped up. The shadow turned around in the air and landed before Conway. A number of leaves fell and fluttered around. Conway jumped back immediately. Uh. <laughs> That's not nice. You don't have to run away like that. The shadow was a boy dressed in strange red clothes, smiling mischievously. He had pale skin that seemed almost transparent. Conway fixed his eyes on him without dropping his guard, sniffing the air. The boy didn't smell like a cat. Well, he doesn't really look like one either. Is that like a lizard tail or something? Besides that, he had a strange hairless and shiny tail snaking between his legs. He was not a cat. Conway tensed even more. The boy clasped his hands behind his back and bowed mockingly. You're rather cautious. Are all you Rebecca like that? Don't worry, I won't do anything. Mr. Kitty turned black. At his words, Conway felt a shock that shook him from his tail to the tips of his ears. How did this strange boy know that? You... just what are you? Conway lowered his ears and glared at the boy, who put one hand on his waist and the other on his chest. Then first, uh, allow me to introduce myself. I am Fury. Pleasure to meet you. As for whether I'm a friend or an enemy, well, I can't really say I'm a friend. The boy known as Fury lowered his head respectfully. Why do you know about me? Why do you think? Anger rose in him because of Fury's teasing. Conway growled as he felt like throwing himself on Fury at any moment. Just tell me. Ah, scary, scary. Don't get so angry, kitty cat. It doesn't really matter how I know you, right? Fury shrugged exaggeratedly. It's a big world out there. It must be really suspicious to you. Isn't that right? Um. 
But then, if I'm so suspicious, there's nothing really strange about me knowing about you. Or is that wrong? <laughs> Just shut up. He didn't want to hear such things. <laughs>